Right, I finally got round to making you the video on Tia Tia Wakan. So I'm going to put you all the best images together that prove the point that I am trying to make that it was a site. Something very technological, similar to what we have today using Suez Works electrical systems and it all went underground and got buried. It's the only way that we can explain some of the things that I'm going to show you. Right, the fact that archaeologists have put it all together in rubble, because I'll show you images how they found it, and then they did it bit by bit based on a narrative how they thought history went down, which is how they deal with every single uh, archaeological site that they come across and why we've for decades on now we've come up with no answers apart from the answers that we find ourselves so even though the area that i am zooming in on right now is not the exact same area as what i am about to flash on the screen it may as well be the people like brian forrester and stephen mailer and everybody else that have been making money from this for the last few decades right I'm going, to, I'm going to show you again that they have no clue what they are talking about or they either do know what they're talking about but book sales mean more than anything to them right we're going to zoom in on this area here and i'm going to show you that it has nothing to do with andesite or diorite because anybody with eyes to see and half a brain should be able to tell that that is the oxid oxidization of metal and lots of it which means what I don't know how long ago that this took place but it's still oxidizing away to this day and the, these are the sites that they go on tours take people around and go and go make thousands of pounds on calling it Inca to this day and I'm zooming in on it there for you for all to see now these are two images that I used in a very recent video which was called uh, a gold mine apparently yes that was the name of the video uh, and, and again we can see oxidization here I'm not going to get into what I did in that video I'm just going to leave the comparison side by side and you can go check it out. I have to put this in the video because it's leading on to what's underneath the supposed pyramids at, at Teotihuacan and we will get into what they are also and what they've been turned into since. And we'll lay a few more obvious examples of oxidization of technology the same as what we use today that's on the wall now turned to rock or it's an imprint in rock and then we will get on with the rest of the video around Teotihuacan and finish off there so this tunnel is the whole reason for the video I did make it once before but it was back when I recorded the screen through a camera so it, it was bent uh, and a few other problems so I'm doing it again and I'm also putting another reason uh, is the pyramid how the pyramids were built must have been built because of the imprints on the outside I will get there uh, but this this tunnel here you can see what I'm comparing it to on the left hand side and to me there's no doubt at all it looks so similar you know you could paint the left hand side blue and you could just say that, that, that that's exactly what it is it, it's an imprint everything's rotted away it's oxidized i, I can't really say what's happened 100 percent, but it, it is indeed what you're looking at so what this site was originally was far more than what they make out on the ancient alien series don't they we'll get into that these platforms that they've built up themselves
because if anybody's seen the Ancient Aliens series, they constantly push this site at Teotihuacan, and they will CG, CGI in flying saucers all landing on this street of the dead on these platforms but these platforms have been made up like that by archaeologists they were found completely covered over right in uh, ash mud and vegetation right and then underneath there were just blocks and just rubble it was just rubble and then they obviously came up with, up with a formula uh, that they were going to stick to and they built every single one the same right and i'm going to prove it to you that they were just basically structures how we built today an outer frame with roofs and floorings which collapsed first as they got covered over with ash and the flood right and then they built the platforms from the rubble for some reason now the final thing that i would like to prove to you with this it's going to be difficult but the imprints are there uh, for you to really prove what i'm talking about here and they couldn't have been built in any other way they could not have been built in the way archaeologists said uh, they, they just came with baskets and they were just piling this stuff up because it would just it would just collapse outwards on its own way to uh, and what would you do it for uh, it would just take a ridiculous amount of time and we don't even want to go there do we but when they were starting to excavate the sides of these large ones specifically they were just excavating the sides constantly they weren't getting anywhere and the reason why is because of the lines that you're looking at right and they're all of the exact same width and what I put it down to, I'm going to show you, is something called crib wall building. Right? I'm going to show you some images shortly. And to me, it is the only way that something so massive could have been built. Whether or not there's more underground, which I just kind of showed you that there were. But it is the only way. The only evidence that goes against that is this image here. That these are only steps that were formed later as this thing had been excavated on one side so they built these steps for people to come down on and then they were were removed when you look at these things today they are perfectly spaced lines running all the way around them uh, and to me it can only be crib wall building the you know the imprints of crib wall building which i will show you now anyway